It is so clear in our own minds why someone we love should love us back. In fact, if it's family, we just assume they will love us, but sometimes they don't. And these relationships can be significant ones, dear people in our lives, sisters, brothers, parents, husbands, wives, and even children. We love them and maybe make the assumption that family will always love family. Well, my friends, that's not a given. Sometimes estrangements, ghosting, blocking, avoiding, whatever you call it, happens between yourself and someone you love. And today we're gonna to talk about this sad, but very hot topic and why we need to let go of those people and not chase them, not chase them to love us. Welcome everyone. I'm so happy you're here. I'm your host, Sherry Harmel. And on this channel, we have discussions and I take you places that hopefully will inspire you to create your own fabulous next chapter. Mine began in Paris, and I bring all I learned on that crazy journey back home to you. Whether your next chapter is happening due to a major milestone, such as a retirement, a divorce, the passing of someone you love, or it's just the next phase of your life, you can find yourself working through new challenges and having to embrace new perspectives, um, you know, which is exactly why we talk about and share with each other so that we can help each other to design what it is that we want to have in our next chapters. So back to the topic. Why is it so many of us can spend years chasing the love of people who don't reciprocate our love back? Now, before you think that this love chasing is all about lovers or partners or even spouses, I want to tell you the story of my final decade of the relationship I had with my parents. In 2010, when I announced to my parents over a lovely breakfast, that I had found my son who I gave up for adoption when I was 18 years old and had welcomed him into my life, they both sat staring at me. I, of course, assumed the, you know, that they would be happy to welcome their oldest grandchild into their lives, but I wasn't paying attention. Two months later, on the day before Christmas Eve, I was disowned by them because I refused to not see my son. Even today, I can only guess at the why of their decision. And frankly, it's not even important to know anymore. But I bring this up because the process of what I did next can apply to all relationships where you have maybe been pushed away, ghosted, or abandoned by someone that you love. After the announcement, you know, after I was told I was out of the family, I spent three years, yes, that's three years, sending letters and emails, trying to get them to understand that I needed to know my son, that he needed to know me, but I also loved them. So I was asking, sometimes I was begging that they get past whatever the reason was they had for disowning me for finding my child. I wanted them. I was trying everything to, I wanted them though, to welcome him and me into their lives. Now, some of my letters were sad. Some were kind. Others were angry. The letters reflected how I was feeling at the time, which was a roller coaster of emotions. So if any of you are working through something similar, you know, it could be an adult child even, it's a roller coaster. And therefore, my letters, as an example, reflected that roller coaster of emotions. But my friends, all of that three years of the writing and the trying to make things work out and whatnot, nothing changed. I never had a relationship with my parents again. Sadly, I think I held on to the hope that when they passed, 
there would be some sort of acknowledgement of our relationship, maybe even a request for forgiveness, right? Like before you get to the pearly gates, maybe you should ask for forgiveness, maybe a statement of love, but it was not to be, truly. I wasn't even told that each of them had died actually by my siblings um, until after the funeral, um, which as sad as it sounds, uh, at least left didn't leave me that question of attend or not attend. The final blow though, was that I was expressly excluded from their will. I, I was shocked, I, I think, and that alerted me to the fact that I was waiting for a letter of apology, a letter of I'm sorry. It wasn't about the money. Uh, I, it was really about the memories. You know, I, I never received one single thing of my parents' life that I shared for over 50 years with them, um, it was as though I had been erased. And that's a very, very hard feeling. But I share this with you because how I responded to being estranged from my parents is a normal process of grieving, the loss of a very significant re relationship. You know, the event happens, the estrangement begins, and then you start to chase them because you love them. <laughs> you try to explain, you big, you maybe say, okay, I'm going to try to explain in a different way, a new way, because you're sure that if you could just find the right way to get into their mindset, to express, you know, how you feel and your hope that you could re reconnect once again, um, you just keep trying. You, you might even get to the point where you're trying to empathize with their feelings. What could they have possibly been thinking? Um, and then you might even get angry and lash out. Eventually, though, you have to resign yourself to what happened. Estrangements, for whatever reason, seem to be happening more and more. I don't know if it's that they're happening more and more or we hear about them more and more, but there's a whole culture of this. There are numerous Facebook groups, believe it or not, that are uh, people who have been ghosted by someone in their family or, or even groups that are encouraging people to ghost whoever it is that is uh, bothering them at the time. It is incredibly sad. Now, there are more subtle ways that we can find ourselves, you know, in this chasing, love chasing cycle than just what I've described. I did this, and I'll give you an example. I did this in my marriage of over 20 years. No matter how hard I work to get my husband to love me back, he never reciprocated. He wasn't interested. Now, I'm a bit of a slow learner, obviously. But when I finally did wave the white flag and tell myself it would be less lonely to be alone than in a marriage with someone who didn't love me, mm, things happened. Same thing with my parents' choice to disown me. And this will happen to you if you are in any kind of a relationship like this, or this happens to a relationship that matters to you. And that is that the person who ghosts you or abandons you, uh, almost always will start to tell people stories about, they, a lot of them are made up, but stories that may or may not be true in order to justify their decision to go no contact with you. And the stories will hurt, truly, they will hurt. And there's a part of you that will probably want to stamp your foot and charge out there and, and tell people that's not true. You know, my parents and the situation of my parents, they told all my relatives and their friends that I was the one that goes to them, that I was this crazy woman who had never gotten over the adoption of my child and oh, my poor parents, blah, blah, blah. Welcome to the victimhood of a, of a narcissist, right? As for my ex-husband, he suddenly became, you know, this crying, loving, caring, wronged husband who was abandoned by his wife. You'll, you're going to laugh. He even put a, I think he I cre created the story to the point that he 
uh, believed it in the divorce process, put a private investigator on me. And <laughs> in the trial, this will make you laugh. In the trial, the private investigator said this was the most boring woman I have ever followed. <laughs> so anyways, you all know where that went. Um, but my ex-husband tells untrue stories about me to this day to anyone who will listen. Because again, when someone does this to you, they are typically exhibiting some kind of narcissistic behaviors. And, um, and then that means they have to justify what their decision is, what their choice is, and they will make up whatever story they need to make up in order for that to happen. You know, the, the world is getting more narcissistic. There's all kinds of conversations about this, um, that, you know, what is feeding it, uh, who knows? Um, and I, people who are a lot smarter than me will probably come up with reasons, but um, it's resulting in more cutoffs, more estrangements, more abandonments. Now we can't do anything about why this is happening. I don't know, my guess is you don't know either, um, but it's happening. And it's happening everywhere. So, but what we we have to get down to what can we control? And I'm speaking from experience here. All we can control is how we respond. How do we navigate this sort of a situation if it happens in our lives? Number one, don't chase love. You get nowhere. And it only puts you in this place of being stuck wishing and hoping things will change, trying different ways to maybe communicate with that person who isn't loving you back to suddenly see, oh my gosh, I should love back. I should love that woman. I should love that man. You have to return. And that I'm speaking again from the process of my own learning. We have to return to the serenity prayer. You know, God grant me the wisdom to know the difference between the things I cannot control and the things I can. I cannot control, and neither can you, whether or not, say, an adult child or a parent or a sibling or a previously good friend wants to see you, wants to prioritize you, wants to love you. So stop chasing them. Stop explaining to them why you are worthy of their attention. Step back and accept that even though you love and care about someone and you maybe will forever, I did with my parents. There's a part of me that still loves my ex-husband. But accept that even though you care about them, you can't make them love you back. We all love who we love, right? And we never want to become so hardened that we trust no one, that we love no one. But that doesn't mean we spend our lives chasing someone that we have been shocked to learn doesn't love us back. Chasing someone to love you takes a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy. I know. I had all sorts of goals and dreams over the 20 plus years of my marriage. But I didn't have the energy or the time to even work on one of those goals. I was too busy trying to get my ex-husband to love me. I had it in my head if I just do X, if I support him in this way, or I change, God forbid, who I am, then he would love me back. All that chasing does is leaves really little time for you to do anything else. If you want to create a fabulous next chapter, a next chapter where you finally get to start on those dreams and goals that you've been thinking of for a while, you have to let go of chasing someone who you love to love you back. And a good place for you to start to kind of analyze, what, what am I doing here? How, how am I spending my time? Am I chasing this person? A good place to start is to do a time log. Time logs are interesting, really interesting. We can use them for lots of different reasons, but this is a perfect example. A time log works somewhat like, say, a food log. If you're going to a nutritionist or you're going on a diet or whatever, 
um, often it's recommended that you, that you do a food log and you write down everything you eat, what time of the day you eat it, maybe how you felt when you were eating and what led you to eat that, whatever it might be. But it's really detailed logging of what you put in your mouth, right? Same with time. It, it works exactly the same way. You write down absolutely almost every minute of every day and how what you're doing during that minute. Because the bottom line is all of us, we only have 24 hours a day. Very, very successful people, rich people, poor people, um, deprived people, uh, successful, happy people. We all only have 24 hours in a day. No one can buy more hours uh, at all. So the question is, what are you doing with your 24 hours a day? How much time are you on the computer? What are you doing on the computer? How much time are you in the car? You know, going from place to place. I share that because my daughter recently moved from a rural area to a more urban area. And suddenly she has at least two more hours in a day to do something other than sitting in her car. So write it all down. And, and I share this because I did it just recently because I found I wasn't mo moving as quickly on some of my tasks that are associated with the book. And I, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What, what am I, do I just not have enough time in the day? So I use the time log for that purpose. You can use the time log for lots of different reasons. It gives you an opportunity to really see how much time you're spending doing the various things in your life. And as it relates to our conversation today, how much time are you spending sending emails to your adult child, writing emails to your adult child, trying to explain yourself or writing in your journal how you're going to create just the perfect holiday so that you have this incredible family and will suddenly expose your spouse's, you know, open your spouse's eyes to your worth. How much time are you spending? Also, maybe you're not emailing, but you're thinking about it. You're replaying an event or a series of events that led up to you being ghosted, you being abandoned, whatever it might be. During doing that time lock, I'm telling you will expose exactly how you're using your 24 hours a day. Do this for an entire week. It's, it's not just a one day event. Do it for an entire week. The longer you do it, the more you will actually gleam from your time log. Um, like I said, I, I do it regularly, maybe not as often as I should, but I do it whenever I'm feeling the least bit stuck. Um, last, I want to share in this very hard conversation, my phrase of the day, which relates directly to chasing the love of someone who doesn't love you back. And that is to accept that it is what it is. And once you accept that you can't do anything about how another person is feeling is incredibly freeing. Remember, we all, we can't, we cannot control how other people act or the other people's decisions or how other people choose to, to treat us, but we can choose how we deal with what life throws at us. So, we can forever choose to chase that love that you want, that relationship that you want, or you can accept that it is what it is and get on with your life. Imagine, you know, that what you want in your, in your next chapter, you know, can happen and have the time to not only make the plans, but also to get started. You know, time marches on, whether you choose to obsess over the actions of someone you love or you start to create exactly what it is that you want in your next chapter. Isn't estrangement sad and incredibly painful? Absolutely, absolutely. Even the cutoff by a good friend can deeply hurt us. And in all estrangements or love that is lost, you'll grieve. But please, please don't let that stop you from creating your own fabulous next chapter. Why? Because you deserve it. 
I'm going to fall back on Queen Elizabeth II's great quote after Princess Diana died. And she said, grief is the price we pay for love. So yes, let yourself grieve, but don't let yourself chase that love to the point that you do not get started on creating what it is that you want to create in your next chapter. I wanna thank all of you for joining me today. Keep, please keep sharing your feedback. I respond to as many of you as humanly possible. I love reading all of your comments, but it's just me. So I can only respond to as many comments as are humanly possible, but I try. And, um, you know, just keep on commenting because the other, the other point is, I think you learn way more from each other than you actually learn from me. So comment, you have no idea who you may be impacting in a positive way. And remember my book, Design Your Fabulous Next Chapter will be coming out at the end of this year. And I encourage you to join my VIP wait list. You know, it's free. All you have to do is go to sherryharmel.com and sign up and you'll get updates then along the way. And we might even have something special during the time of the book launch. So go to sherryharmel.com and join. Take care, everyone, and stay focused on all that you are creating in your next chapter. Aviento.